Welcome back to week one, uh, introduction to geology and minerals. And in video three, we're going to continue on with minerals, but we're going to move forward and discuss some of the uh, major mineral groups, um, what minerals fit where, why, and then we'll talk about how minerals form, where we find them now, and what they're used for. This is all kind of combined into uh, uh, one section here. So the major mineral groups we have are what are called silicates and non-silicates. Um, non-silicates are broken up into oxides, carbonates, sulfides, and sulfates. Um, silicates are a much bigger group. They are composed of silicon and oxygen. And all of these silicates have um, the same makeup. They have um, four oxygen ions and one silicon ion. Um, these are the most common of all the minerals on the planet, so they make about, up about 90% of the weight of the crust. Um, and this um, silicon and oxygen form what's called a tetrahedron, silicon oxygen tetrahedron. It has this kind of pyramid-like shape to it. Um, and the, all of these minerals and the silicates have um, one silicon and then four oxygen, and they're bonded in various ways. We have sheet silicates, um, there's single chain, double chain, framework silicates, all different types. Um, and this tetrahedron has this overall negative four charge to it. So an example here, uh, I'll kind of walk through silicates and then go into the non-silicates. So um, silicates are, um, they have these silicon oxygen tetrahedrons. Um, micas are used for makeup. So um, mica, uh, when it breaks up into small pieces, have this kind of glittery like look to it. So that shiny stuff in women's makeup is usually mica. Feldspars, which you can see here, um, feldspars are usually used for things like drywall, things like that. Um, quartz uh, is basically pure SiO4 um, or SiO2 and they're a framework silicate and these uh, are used for things like glass um, and um, silicates include micas, feldspars, amphibole, pyroxene, and quartz. These are all your framework uh, framework. We've got single, double, chain, and sheet silicates here as well. And the, the way these um, uh, silicon tetrahedrons are arranged together produces the cleavage that we see. So we see cleavage in these first four, and then in quartz, this framework silicates, um, the way it's put together, there is no cleavage. The mineral just shatters if you break it. Um, and one common one is talc. It's a type of silicate, and it's uh, what we use for powders, paper, plaster, paint, some, and some cosmetics. So silicates have a lot of different uses. Um, and we've got carbonates. Carbonates have um, uh, calcium and oxygen. We've got carbonates uh, like calcite, aragonite, and dolomite. These precipitate out of water, and we use them to make cement for building. And then we've got oxides. These are metal ores, so this is where we get a lot of metals that we use. So we've got magnetite, which you can see here has iron and oxygen. Hematite, which has iron and oxygen as well. So these are major sources of iron. And these are going to be mined and extracted. So metals have, like iron, have lots of different uses. uses. So these metal ores are going to have some type of metal, like iron, bonded with oxygen to create these oxides. And all of these oxides are going to, to um, be subject to tarnishing or rusting as well. And halides, next group, we have, um, these are kind of the, the salts, where we have an example here of table salt, or halite, which is NaCl, and then KCl, which is potash. These precipitate out of water as well, and they're used in food to make fertilizer, ice cream, all sorts of stuff. And here you can see uh, crystal form, or the, or the way it breaks. Um, halite, actually, the crystal form and its cleavage are very similar to one another. And here you can see some 
halite in its natural environment. This is a salt flat in Death Valley National Park where water drains into and then evaporates and leaves the salts behind in this basin. <coughs> and uh, here we've got salts in Puerto Rico. Um, they do this in the, around the Salt Lake as well where they have um, hot, dry conditions where we can have water evaporate pretty rapidly. And what they do is they have these kind of square areas that are pretty shallow where they allow that salty water, so seawater in Puerto Rico and salt the Great Salt Lake area, it's the actual lake water. They flood these shallow basins and then they let the water evaporate away and then the salts are left behind which they can then harvest and use for foods um, or um, other various uses. Um, and in New York there's ancient salt beds that exist um, that are actually mined and that salt, you can see huge piles here, um, is then used on the roads to get rid of the nasty ice buildup that we get. Um, and then uh, the next group are what are called sulfates and these have sulfur in their chemical formula, things like gypsum. And this one um, is used for plaster of Paris. It pr also precipitates out of water and is used for building materials as well. And you can see a couple examples of those here. And then sulfides also have sulfur in the chemical formula, but the sulfur is bonding with a metal. These are also um, another source of the major metals that we use, things like lead and iron. Um, so we've got FES, so iron and sulfur in fool's gold or pyrite. Galena, which is this large one here, has lead and sulfur in it, and uh, it is a lead ore. So these are major um, sources of some of the metals that we use. And then we have native elements. So this is basically pure gold, pure silver, pure sulfur, or pure copper. Um, and these are mined as is, so they can be pulled right out of the, the rocks. Um, and they're used in a wide variety of things, jewelry, wiring, all sorts of stuff. Um, and here you can see um, copper in the foreground and then this rock that actually has silver in it. The process of getting these metals out of the rocks is pretty tricky um, because a lot of these um, native elements, the sulfides, um, <coughs> the oxides, the, the minerals are actually within the rocks. They're not just me necessarily a pure deposit. You don't see just a huge chunk of silver in the rock. What you have is bits of silver or bits of pyrite, bits of um, galena in um, an area uh, that the rock is then drilled or mined out. As you can see here, this is an example of Berkeley Pit um, in Montana. This was um, the top image here in the side one. These, this area was actually uh, mined for copper and then over here the Homestake Mine in Lead, South Dakota was mined for gold. And what you can see here is these um, lines in the rocks and these are um, hydrothermal veins that are present and you can see these are also present up here in Berkeley Pit. So we have areas that have a higher concentration of these um, copper ores or gold um, and, and these uh, minerals are forming along these hydrothermal veins. So we, so we see them precipitating in um, see these various conditions. And where there's a lot of these rocks present, well, they're going to mine the rocks out, and then they have to do a lot of different things to get those metals out of the rock. Um, so first they have to dig these huge pits, um, and Berkeley Pit in Montana is, um, the water in here is highly toxic, it's purple, it's very acidic, um, and it's a very dangerous place. It's actually a super fun site. Uh, this area, um, this mine became so um, polluted this area because uh, originally all this water was being pumped out actively um, but once they stopped using this area they stopped pumping water out filled up uh, with the groundwater and that water reacted with some of the sulfur and sulfides that are in the rocks and then created this very very highly acidic area um, and a lot of the water in this area the groundwater is polluted with this um, what's called acid mine drainage, which is a common thing, uh, occurrence with a lot of these major mines, is we have 
um, the rocks that are getting excavated, pulled out, surfaces are exposed to weathering, and we get more um, nasty chemicals coming off of these rocks than we normally would if they were just left as is. Um, so some of the processes that they use, um, these are some pictures in an actual mine. This is a Stillwater Mine in Red Lodge, Montana, where they mine platinum, palladium, um, rhodium, gold and silver and depending on the prices of gold and silver sometimes they pull out sometimes they don't because they're very trace small traces of those um, metals in some of these rocks but basically uh, this person right here um, who was on a field trip with me in field camp actually works at this mine now and tells the the miners where to actually drill he crawls through spaces that are not much bigger than him to explore and find some of these rocks that have these minerals in them and then tells them where to drill and they pull those rocks out and then crush them into smaller pieces and then they put them in these huge tanks where they have various chemical reactions to um, break down the rock and leave the metals behind so they can pull those metals out of this kind of slurry of chemicals and rock. Um, and then of course they're left with all these chemicals that they have to dispose of. Still water mine um, at the time was, um, and I'm pretty sure it still is, um, one of the safer mines. They have uh, a lot of different procedures put in place uh, to help protect the area around them so they don't pollute too much. So they have um, lined catchment basins where they put some of this um, uh, uh, chemicals when they're done with it so that they can um, maybe evaporate off the water, leave the chemicals behind so that they can collect them and dispose of them in a much safer manner than just letting it all drain away. So. Um, a lot of uh, these problems that we see here at like the Berkeley Pit Mine, um, a lot of these hazards that exist today are left over from poor mining practices, mistakes that um, we ne didn't necessarily know some of these things were going to happen, um, and then um, companies go out of business, and then no one's there to, to help pay for the cleanup. Uh, so that's why this is a super fun site. Now there is some mining going on here uh, by a new company in a different area, um, but some of these older areas are just kind of left. But now there's stricter regulations and um, more um, practices that are going on at these mines to make it a little bit safer and less um, nasty chemicals that are re uh, released. Um, so a lot of these metals that are pulled out, um, we use them in our everyday lives. So um, in your cars, fuel cells, um, in your electronics, your jewelry, go to the dentist, water treatment, all sorts of different uses for these. Um, so pretty important for us and um, it's important that these companies um, actually follow those rules and regulations that are put in place to help protect the environment um, for not only the wildlife but for us in the future as well. So uh, it kind of goes through and talks about um, very basics for um, intro to geology and also intro to minerals. Make sure that you, uh, before you come to lab this week, make sure that you have um, watched all of these videos, which hopefully you have at this point, and you read through the textbook. Um, these videos are an overview of the information, not a detailed description of everything. So make sure that you're reading through those chapters. Be sure to bring the appropriate documents to lab. Print everything off that you need to. Read through the lab before you come to lab. And then also watch the lab prep video. And of course, participate in this week's discussion activity. So thanks for watching and I will see you in lab.